This movie time is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. Further details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.org. The award-winning It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. I'm Hope Madden. This is It's Movie Time. Hope. Yes. Christopher Nolan. Mm-hmm. Memento, Dark Knight. This is one first-rate director. It is. But most of that stuff has been like cerebral and interior. And now he has a war film called Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. Does it stand up to the rest of his oeuvre? It does. I think it more than does. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny. I'm all in, you know, a uh, Christopher Nolan movie. And I have not liked all of them. But he's just a director where if a film is coming out, okay, I'm going to go see this. Yes. And uh, But I was prepared for a two and a half to three hour long heady serpentine you know and that is not what i got at all it's a very brisk 90 maybe maybe 100 minute film right spare um uh, uh quick moving uh i mean it's a very in many ways not christopher nolan type film yeah i know it isn't and you know he does he does so well of course now this is the story of dunkirk in the second world war may 1940 uh, almost 400,000 troops are uh, really confined to a beach in Dunkirk, France. Right across the English Channel. Yeah, and they can see. Yeah, the channel, but just they, about. Yeah, they can't get home. <laughs> there's this mole or barrier uh, reef that keeps the big ships from getting them. And the Germans, who are not mentioned in this film, I want you to know that Nolan keeps everything so... Uh, focused. Yeah. On the beach. Yes. We, I mean, if you're an 18 year old sitting there, unless you read, I think, the credits of the, or those notes at the beginning, I'm not sure you'd even know who the enemy is. Yeah, well. <laughs> but he's I, not spoon feeding anybody. No, he surely isn't. <laughs> I mean, this is minimalist filmmaking is. as far as an evacuation. Now, um, Winston Churchill says you don't win wars with evacuations. Mm. So this, not like this is a big war story in in what in that 90 minutes you're talking about uh, but what is it about um i mean it is uh it is a war story i mean and it's a story about how um you know england england did what it had to do to position itself to better defend its country and by england i don't just mean the troops because that's really the heart of the story is that they call up people just people left in England who have fishing boats and, and casual, you know, cruising fare to make the trip to Dunkirk to ferry these guys to ships, which is amazing. But one of the things that's great about the story, I mean, he tells it from three different perspectives in, in crisscrossing chronological order. So one is like an hour out, one is a day out, and one is a week. Um, and uh, I think it helps the movie remain sort of simultaneously epic and intimate. Yes. Um, and uh, it, he does it really, really well. And then also, because one is really on the ground, one is on the water, one is in the air. Right, another three. <laughs> and of course, it, very few people master visual storytelling the way Christopher Nolan does. It's glorious to look at. And of course, you know, um, there will be a 70 millimeter screening of this at Gateway Film Center. I've already seen the movie. I will be at the 70 millimeter. I know. Well, isn't it also IMAX? I think yes. It is also yeah, you can. Yeah. It's it's gorgeous. It's a gorgeous, beautiful film. Um, and and um, you know, one of the things about Nolan is he tends to be not a maximalist, if that's a word, right? Yeah. And uh, and but this is not a bombastic film. This is it's, not Jerry Bruckheimer. No, no, it's not even Spielberg. I mean, it's you know, he there. It's it's really really not. It's very low key. Um, and, uh, and and reserved, and the performances are even Kenneth Branagh, who is a ham sandwich everywhere else. <laughs> yes, he plays the highest ranking Brit. He but is... a very dialed down performance. Oh, I know. <laughs> um, and, and it really benefits the film, I think. It's a very respectful, gorgeous, emotional, but, but, but reserved telling of a, a fascinating piece of history. What I wanted was to get more of the epic sweep from the, the magnitude of the of the Second World War, and he has so dialed that down into that beach that I had to adjust myself. So used I am to even Saving Private sure, Ryan yes. or The Longest Day or any of mm -hmm. these huge, what I would call epic-like. This is not it. But when you get inside that plane with 
Tom Hardy, mm -hmm. you are there. Yeah. You're, oh my you're God! We're inside those boat hulls. The and the boat. I thought with Mark Rylance as the as the as the pilot. So volunteer. good. Yeah. Oh. He's always so good. <laughs> Talk you about know? restraint. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey. But there are, you know, there are, you know, the uh, the Germans are aware every time these these boys board a ship, and so very often you're in the hull of a ship with that's too full of these poor kids that they trying to get home, and it's a claustrophobic nightmare inside it there. Is. And it's interesting to go from the aerial shots, which I don't even know how we could capture something quite that glorious, yeah. down into the hull of yes. a boat with a bunch of terrified boys. It's it's quite a, but he does it without feeling, uh, you know, like a whiplash. It's 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 a really well made movie. Listen, hope this is a PG thirteen, I believe. Yeah, there is very little blood. Very little. I mean, that's one of the marvels of mm -hmm. it. You could take your family, and as long as you gave your kids some background, yeah. which I think was necessary, yeah. uh, I think this could be a very satisfying film, particularly with the young men on the boat mm -hmm. with Rylance. Mm -hmm. uh, he gets that point of view. Uh, what I missed, and I understand Nolan's purpose, I missed some of the background with the Germans. I realize this would have been purely speculative. For instance, you have three days where the Germans didn't swoop down and massacre those 400,000. And I believe it's unknown at this point why they made that decision, or they might have thought the Luftwaffe could take care of it, but there were only a few planes as depicted in the film. So I'm trying to think of, well, what was their reasoning for allowing the Allies to have those three days to get out of there? Did well, I mean, it, it is, it, like you said, it would be speculative, but of course, yeah. you know, this wasn't the only front uh, in the war at the time, yeah, and you know everybody's everybody's yeah. uh, priorities were divided at the moment, which is really one of the reasons why they couldn't they couldn't spare England couldn't spare the craft to get them the boys off the beach, right? So it could be that that Germany was also yeah. divided at that time. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's curious to me also. Um, <clears throat> it's curious to me also that in the case of the Brits, uh, this was the major part of their army. Right there on the beach, which I think though is you know in Churchill's famous speech that he said it was a, a remarkable, um, uh, I think he said a catastrophic blunder. Yes, yes, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, wow, Hope Madden, mm -hmm. the film is Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. What grade would you a. award it? <laughs> I'm all in, <laughs> and I am going to <laughs> award it an A minus because I wanted that context. Mm -hmm. <laughs>